Hey everyone, it's Sassy Girl Cheese here, and today we are watching the start of the single best franchise in Disney Channel history. We are watching High School Musical. Yeah, I said what I said. This movie really makes you want to pop and lock and jam and break. Wait, is that even legal? I rewatched this movie with the expectation that it was a teen movie, but it absolutely wasn't made for anyone over the age of 11. This movie set the most unrealistic expectations for me as a kid, and I still long to have school-wide choreographed numbers after the big game. But without further ado, let's get ready for another OK video. It's New Year's Eve and we have our two teen protagonists hanging out at a bougie ski resort, Troy and Gabriella. Gabriella is a very shy smarty pants who really likes to read. She is also starting a new school after winter break. On the other hand, Troy is a very popular and dreamy basketball star and neither of them know that 2006 is the start of something new. Stupid. <laughs> Troy's dad is also the coach and he peaked in high school because he was also the basketball star in 1981 in the same school. Um, so he just like relives his teenage years through his son, which is really unhealthy, but whatever. <laughs> They're practicing for the big playoff game and mom comes in and she's like, honey, if you don't stop playing basketball for five minutes, I'm divorcing you and suing you for alimony because I'm ignored and underappreciated. And I know that every time you say that you are staying late to catch up on work, you're actually sleeping with the English teacher. She didn't say any of that, but we only see this woman for 10 seconds and then we never see her again. So it's much more fun to create like a really dramatic backstory. <laughs> one more. Last real quick, one. Real quick. Look how fucking done she is. You can't tell me she isn't annoyed. Troy gets all gussied up for the kids party. We see all these kids and teens with crazy hats. I can't help but to think what these NPC kids are doing in the year 2024. Like this girl in the back with no friends who was probably told to just stand there and collab. Or the gentleman with the enormous cowboy hat. <laughs> okay, let me know in the comments if this is you. Gabriella sits down in the middle of a party and starts reading because she's so mysterious. And Troy is dressed like a Sims 2 character. Also, please tell me why every single Disney boy from the early 2000s had this exact haircut. It's like their designated hairstylist only knew how to do one haircut. Well, anyways, the party's popping with some solicited karaoke, and the next two victims are Troy and Gabriella, who are then pushed onto the stage against their will. Gabriella is about to have a full-on panic attack, and this kid with the Viking hat just blows one of those horns in her face. Yeah, come on. They get up there, and at first they're shy, but they start feeling it. They start getting into it. Troy even starts taking off his jacket. Viking kid is straight vibing through the whole song. They're having this moment. They exchange digits and she dips out. Troy thinks he might not ever see her again. Or will he? Is this the start of something new? So winter break is over. We cut over to East High, home of the Wildcats, which is their basketball team. And they rule the school. When I say that the school lives and breathes basketball, I'm not exaggerating, and there's seemingly no other sport in this school. No football, lacrosse, soccer, just basketball. Chad is Troy's manipulative bestie, and we're about to get introduced to an ensemble of characters, so I promise I'll rant about them later. Oh, and they constantly chant their team name. I think if I had to hear that every five minutes, I would probably drop out. Strolling through the hallway is Sharpay Evans, the Mona Lisa of early 2000s Disney, and her brother Ryan Evans, who was the first gay guy I ever saw simply exist in an early 2000s movie. And don't f***ing come at me in the comments because Ryan Evans was always gay, even pre-series. I'm not here to play games. And this is Taylor. She's very smart and also very manipulative. Oh, and surprise, surprise. Surprise, surprise! Gabriella is the new girl. I love how Gabriella is like, I'm so nervous. Mm. And her mom is like, honey, I literally just took a relocation package from my employer. And if I leave within a year, I have to repay it back. So you're staying. You'll do great. You always do. And I made my company promise that I can't be transferred again until you graduate. Hi. I don't want to be the school's freaky genius girl again. Yeah, guys, I'm sure Gabriella, the single most gorgeous girl in 2006, has a lot to worry about. 
So everyone in her ensemble all has the same homeroom class, which is ran by Ms. Darbus, the drama teacher. Troy starts talking about pink jelly. Wait, remember the night before? No, not at all. All I remember is like pink jelly. I what, what is that? Is that drugs? Are you doing drugs, Troy? Troy notices Gabriella walk in and he can't quite tell if it's the pink jelly drugs he took or if it's actually her. So he decides that it's a great time to call her phone and see if it rings. All of a sudden, everybody forgets what their ringtone sounds like and everyone like pulls out their phone to check to see if it's their phone ringing. <laughs> and because of this, everybody gets detention. After a whole two minutes, the bell rings and Troy and Gabriella are just so surprised to see each other. They do this really annoying thing where they start finishing each other's sentences. I don't believe it. Oh, me neither. But how? Oh, my mom's company. While talking about their karaoke night, they pass by the sign-up sheets for the school musical, Twinkle Town. Yeah, that, that's the name of the musical. It's Twinkle Town. If you're hoping to get a synopsis of what this musical is about, you're going to be highly disappointed because there's not even a hint as to what the plot is for this musical. It's just never mentioned. So even though they both have a slight interest in signing up, Troy doesn't sign up because he's on the basketball team, and Gabriella doesn't want to sign up because she's new and doesn't want to commit to anything yet. Sharpay pops up out of nowhere, insults Troy's intelligence, and then takes up the entire sign-up sheet with her name. Iconic. I love Gabriella's response to Sharpay after she asked if she was signing up. Were you going to sign up too? No, no, no. I was just looking at all the bulletin boards. Oh no, I was looking at all the bulletin boards. Yeah, okay, sure, Gabriella. Sharpay has googly eyes for Troy, and I just want to quickly point out that any and all sabotage created by Sharpay has everything to do with her being jealous of Gabriella. And as much as I love Sharpay Evans, anyone who doesn't think Sharpay isn't the villain is completely delusional. Over at basketball practice, Troy tries to hint to Chad that he's maybe interested in doing the musical, but Chad quickly shoots it down saying, oh, well, LeBron James and Shaquille O'Neal never did school musicals. Okay, but why? Why not? Because I would absolutely love to see a Shaquille O'Neal musical. Which then leads into the first musical number in the movie, which is completely ironic, but we just have to accept how musical land works. This song is called Get Your Head in the Game, and it's about Troy trying to forget about silly musicals so he could focus on basketball. And throughout the song, he's like, but wait, I like singing. And then he's like, no, basketball only. Troy is just so misunderstood. So throughout this movie, Sharpay and Ryan are actively suspicious of Troy and Gabriella. Over in science class, Sharpay asks Gabriella if she already knew Troy, and Gabriella's like, mm, no, not really. And Sharpay knows she's lying. Like, you can really feel the tension here. Also, Gabriella calls out the teacher for writing down the wrong equation. Shouldn't the second equation read 16 over pi? 16 over pi? That's quite impossible. I stand corrected. Yeah, dumbass. Taylor's impressed. She's like, oh, looky here. We have a little Jimmy Neutron in the house. <laughs> and I guess Sharpay is mad that Gabriella is smart. She's even shaking. Troy is making sure the sign-up sheet is still there, and Ryan goes up to Sharpay and is like, Hey, Sharpay, isn't that a little weird? That's not a basketball. What's Troy doing over there? But Sharpay is a little bit more concerned about who Gabriella is, because she's the new girl, so she decides to use the World Wide Web to figure out who she is. I love how she searches Gabriella Montez, and the first result ends up being exactly who she's looking for, as if there's not a million people with that name. They find out that Gabriella is not only smart, but she's mega smart. She got recognized for having some kind of smart person award. So Sharpay prints out the web page, and we're going to find out how she uses this to her advantage. Over in detention, we have all the teens painting sets for Twinkle Town. We have a wacky looking tree. We have a giant moon and also a fashionable camel. Still have no idea what this musical is about. Sharpay took that printout and put it in Taylor's locker, and Taylor comes running up, assuming Gabriella put it there, and she's like, Gabriella, please join our smart people decathlon team. Gabriella's like, no, I didn't put that in there, and I also don't want to join the decathlon team. She makes it very clear that she doesn't want to join any clubs right now, because she's new, she's still figuring things out. But Sharpay kind of stirs the pot a little bit with that. Meanwhile, Troy and Chad are stapling leaves to the wacky tree, and Troy's dad, the coach of the Wildcats, finds out that they're in detention while they're supposed to be in practice. What the heck are those two doing in a tree? It's called crime and punishment. <laughs> yeah, what the heck? <laughs> so Darbus and Daddy Bolton are arguing in the principal's office over what's more important, sports or drama club. And this is, of course, an ongoing feud that they've had since the dawn of time, but it's very apparent that the principal likes sports better. Just look at all them balls everywhere. But in Daddy Bolton's defense, they have their most important game in about a week, 
And for some reason, Miss Darbus just isn't understanding about that. Like, she's so insistent on having Chad and Troy paint a tree for a musical that hasn't even started auditions yet. Taylor is pressing Gabriella on joining the decathlon. She's going to continue bothering Gabriella about this throughout the entire movie, but Gabriella could not be any less interested. She just wants to do her own thing. She deflects the conversation and asks Taylor what she thinks about Troy, and Taylor thinks that Troy is just some egotistical basketball bonehead, and she also thinks that Gabriella should sit with the brainiacs at lunch. It's a very common theme in this movie to quite literally categorize everyone based on what their hobby is. Troy and his dad are practicing for the big game, and Troy tries to start hinting to his dad that something's been on his mind. Did you ever think about trying something new, but were afraid of what your friends might think? You mean like going left? You're doing fine. Come on. Yeah, dad, going left. That's exactly what I meant. <laughs> his dialogue is my favorite. What if Troy was like, no, dad, I'm gay. In homeroom, we find out that today's the day. The musicale auditions are being held during free period, and that's how she says musical for some reason. It will be your chance for the musicale auditions, both single and- I'm not going to pronounce it that way again. Chad is trying to discuss basketball with Troy and says that he wants to practice during free period, but Troy says that he has to make up some homework during that time instead. Oh, and Chad is the only character in this entire movie who occasionally wears t-shirts with catchy phrases on them. Like this one says, I come with my own background music, which was certainly a choice. But Chad is immediately suspicious of this and starts following him, so it becomes this game of cat and mouse where Troy tries to outrun Chad to make it to the auditions. I mean, just remember, the whole school would turn upside down if they found out that the basketball star auditioned for a musical. Troy sneaks his way in and the auditions start. He's hiding in the back with Gabriella. We also meet Kelsey, who is my least favorite character in the entire movie. No hate to Alicia Rulin, I love her, but everything about this character just irritates me. She's really judgmental, she's kind of a pushover, and overall just really annoying. It's also important to note that this show was written by Kelsey. The audition scene was an obvious parody of American Idol, which was the most popular reality TV series of its time, so naturally most of the auditions are god-awful. It's really hard to pick a favorite audition. Like, this guy reminds me of the Running on Empty food review guy. We're always right there next to beside me. <laughs> I love ballet dude twirling on the stage and then crashing into something. And then the stoners were a much needed addition to the movie. That I cannot see. Cannot see. That you were right beside me. Sharpay and Ryan's audition gave a whole new spin to the song that everyone else was auditioning with. This feeling's like no other. I want you to know. They absolutely crush it. Kelsey's reaction is just kind of alarming. I just really need to know what her problem is. So Miss Darbus calls out for any last minute auditions, but no one says anything. So she starts packing up and then Gabriella abruptly wants to audition. Miss Darbus says that individual auditions were already done and that there's simply no other pairs. But then Troy comes to the rescue and he's like, I'll do it. I'll sing with her. But it doesn't matter because they weren't on time. So it's too late. Or is it? Kelsey falls and gets her music paper everywhere. So Troy and Gabriella go to help her. Kelsey doesn't thank them or anything, she just stares at them. <laughs> Troy's being very nice and buttering her up. He says it's very impressive that she wrote the whole show and says that she should be the one calling all the shots. He even makes a basketball reference, but she doesn't get it. Composer of a show, kind of like the playmaker in basketball. Playmaker? You know, the one who makes everyone else look good. Kelsey asks them if they want to hear how the song is supposed to sound and starts playing the audition song. And then Troy and Gabriella start singing with perfect harmonies. Okay, but did anyone prefer this version over the Sharpay and Ryan version? Anyone? No? Okay, just checking. Miss Darbus overhears them and decides to have a change of heart. She gives them both callbacks. Sharpay is not happy about this. She starts screaming in the hallways. <laughs> Troy and Gabriella being on that callback list sends the whole school in a frenzy. I mean, he broke the rules. There's no basketball in Twinkletown. We get a musical number of all the cliques falling apart when people start confessing that they like things outside of their clique. And the lyrics are quite literal with stick to the status quo being in the chorus. Zeke on the basketball team likes to bake. History girl likes hip hop dancing. Love to pop and lock. 
And Skater Guy likes to play the cello. And all of them are like, oh, well, if Troy can be in a musical, then I can be who I really am. Also, where are the emo kids? Do they just not exist? <laughs> but during the bridge of the song, everyone has kind of embraced this idea of being your own person as Sharpay is very against this. Not because she actually cares, of course. Because she likes Troy and she's very jealous of Gabriella. Like if Troy auditioned by himself, she'd probably just insist on pairing up with him. She wouldn't actually care that he is auditioning for the musical. I don't know why, but this particular transition gives me goosebumps every time. <laughs> the callbacks? I can't have people staring at me. I really can't. No. Gabriella slips on some milk and dumps food all over Sharpay. Sharpay is real mad about it. Chad is really mad at Troy for missing practice audition for a musical. And just a reminder that their most important game is days away. So I'm not really too sure what you're thinking, Troy, especially since there's another musical coming up in the spring. Like if you really wanted to be in a musical, you couldn't have just waited. But Chad further explains on how everyone is confessing and even calls out Zeke for baking. Leave Zeke alone. Just let the man bake. Ms. Darbus storms into Daddy Bolton's office, who clearly has no idea what's going on. He's just in the middle of eating a sandwich. <laughs> like, Ms. Darbus is saying, oh, you planned this. Your son auditioned for my musical, and you're trying to sabotage me. <laughs> and Daddy Bolton's looking at her confused as if she's making the whole thing up. My Twinkletown musicale to be made into farce. Twinkletown? See? I knew it. He's literally laughing in this scene, like, why is he so serious? Gabriella vents to Taylor about how she didn't mean for any of this to happen, that she's not trying to beat out Sharpay or anything, and that her and Troy didn't even audition for the musical. I love Zeke and his newfound confidence to ask out Sharpay. The man is bacon and ballin'. Okay, um, well I just thought maybe, uh, you could watch me play ball sometime or something. <laughs> I'd rather stick pins in my eyes. This is my favorite quote in the entire movie. Troy sneaks a note in Gabriella's locker, telling her to meet him at this rooftop plant garden at school. They're having like this heart to heart and Troy's talking about how misunderstood he is and stuff. I'm sorry, but these lines just sound so gay coded without context. I don't know what he's gonna say when he finds out about the singing. My parents' friends are always saying, your son's the basketball guy. You must be so proud. You're Gabriella doesn't really open up much about her. Her whole thing has just been wanting to have a low profile coming to a new school, which is the exact opposite of what happened. When I was singing with you, I just felt like a girl. You even looked like one too. <laughs> what if we got a Mulan moment where Gabriella takes off her wig and is like, actually, Troy, there's something I need to tell you. I'm Hannah Montana. <laughs> Okay, we've officially derailed. I'm moving on. Over the next day or so, we get a montage of Troy and Gabriella practicing for the callbacks, and Sharpay and Ryan are pretty sneaky about it. Also, I love how Sharpay just doesn't even notice Gabriella standing right in front of her. Gee, that was close. We get to basketball practice, and who is missing other than Troy Bolton himself? He's not even practicing singing or anything productive. He is just painting a box for a show that hasn't even finished auditions yet. <laughs> Troy shows up right as practice ends, and Dad is pretty annoyed about it. Troy is like, it's okay, Dad. I'll just stay late and practice my free throws. But Gabriella shows up, and they're all flirty flirty on the court. Dad is low-key kind of annoyed about this, and he's like, hey, girl, sorry, you gotta go. Troy acts really bratty about this. He's like, come on, Dad. Practice is over. Troy, you literally missed practice. <laughs> and am I supposed to sit here and believe that Daddy Bolton is in the wrong? He's basically assuming that the reason why Troy has been missing so much practice days before a playoff game is because he has a crush on a girl. And he would assume correctly. Years. That girl shows up. That girl is named Gabriella. She's very nice. Oh, okay, well in that case, we can just cancel the whole game. This interaction right here just highlights why dad coaches end up harming the relationships. He insinuates that singing isn't really important and that he should just exclusively focus on basketball. But you know, I feel like if Troy just waited until after basketball season to try, you know, being in a musical, then dad would be a little bit more understanding, you know? But Troy had to pick the most conflicting time of the year to try something new. Chad tries to talk some sense into Troy, but it doesn't work, so the basketball team ends up teaming up with the Brainiacs to try and sabotage Troy and Gabriella's relationship, which is really screwed up. Sharpay and Ryan continue to be completely oblivious of what's going on and assume that the basketball team and the Brainiacs are somehow teaming up to have Troy and Gabriella audition for the musical as like some sort of prank. 
And Sharpay is concerned that if Gabriella ends up with Troy, then the science girls go from drool to cool. Science girls get Gabriella hooked up with Troy Bolton. The Scholastic Club goes from drool to cool. Okay, back to the sabotage. So Chad and Taylor are the two ringleaders behind this whole plan. And their reasoning behind doing this is to save Troy and Gabriella from themselves. Today, Chad is wearing a shirt that says easily distracted. I am also easily distracted. So their plan is to get Troy in the locker room and rile him up to the point where he starts to say mean things about Gabriella and film him live doing so. And they do this by having this intervention style meeting where they start naming like some of the greatest basketball players in their high schools that have all peaked while they were teenagers, including his dad, by the way, to kind of tug the heartstrings a little bit. And, you know, they're basically saying, look, Troy, if you keep missing practice and putting musicals and your girlfriend over the team, then we're going to lose the playoff game over at Team Taylor. Taylor is giving this really weird tangent about how if Gabriella ends up with Troy and chooses him, then that will somehow inhibit her ability to be some female empowerment figure in science. And Gabriella's like, okay, whatever, Taylor. Troy's over in the locker room trying to convince his team that he's serious about winning. And Chad, you know, starts the camera and Troy starts going over how he feels like basketball is more important and then Gabriella is just a girl. He follows this off by saying some really hurtful things and says that he'll basically just forget about Gabriella. Just a side note, what kind of Wi-Fi are they using in 2006? Gabriella's like in tears and Taylor's like, hmm, so when are you going to join the team? When, when, he, when are you going to join the team? So Gabriella, we'd love to have you for this classic decathlon. Jesus Christ, Taylor, calm down. Can you just give her a damn minute? I wish I could be that pretty when I cry. Gabriella sings the song, which is very much sung by her and another woman, but the vocals are like overlaid on top of each other. Look at that ginormous picture of Zac Efron. Do any high schools actually do that? So Troy comes up to Gabriella, completely unaware that she saw a live footage of him bashing her. And Gabriella is like, hey, look, save it. You're going to do your thing. I'm going to do my thing, effectively breaking up with him. But oh no, now Troy is distracted. He starts messing up in basketball and his head is not in the game. He's got to get his head in the game. <laughs> Gabriella isn't even sitting with the brainiacs. I mean, this did not go according to plan. Today, Chad is wearing a shirt that says, laughing on the inside. What are you laughing at, Chad? Your stupid plan? So Chad and Taylor try taking everything back. They go to tell Troy and Gabriella that they were behind this whole elaborate plan, hoping it will fix everything. But when Taylor tells Gabriella, um, she's like, okay, cool. You know, that was really cruddy, but he still said all those things. And she's not wrong. I mean, I don't know what Taylor expects. And I'm almost at the point where I feel like I don't like Taylor more than I don't like Kelsey because Taylor is just up Gabriella's ass the entire movie. She's like, join the decathlon team, join the decathlon team to the point where she even ruins her relationship with Troy. That's kind of screwed up, don't you think? And then she tries taking it back. Like what? Now, now you're worried that Gabriella won't like you? Of course she won't like you because you're an idiot. Yeah, whatever, Taylor. Troy makes a visit to Gabriella's house and he tries going to the door, but she don't want to talk. So he tries calling her and he's like, I didn't mean any of those things I said. I don't want to be the basketball guy. I just want to sing with you. He like shows up on her balcony and starts singing really bad. And now looking in your eyes. I love you, bitch. I ain't gonna never stop loving you. So the next day at school, Troy and Gabriella are on the same page and both of their cliques are super supportive and they are so ready for callbacks. Sharpay and Ryan realize, however, that they need to sabotage Troy and Gabriella further and they go to Miss Darbus and convince her to change the callback time to be the same time as the decathlon thing and the playoff game. And Miss Darbus obliges because it's what's best for the drama department. I also want to point out that Kelsey overhears this entire thing and doesn't say anything. So all the teens are bombed, but Troy is optimistic that they can still make it. That if they all work together, that they can somehow still make the callbacks. Troy is getting ready for the big playoff game and his dad comes in to have a little heart to heart discussion with him. But it's a little tone deaf. He's like, you want to know what I see? 
I want to see my son out there playing the game that we both love. I want to see you having fun playing basketball. I mean, he could have like acknowledged the singing thing just a little bit. Callbacks have started and Kelsey is dressed like Charlie Chaplin for some reason. Sharpay and Ryan start their performance and they're in full makeup and costume, lighting and everything. And just a reminder that this isn't the actual show. It's just the second audition, but whatever. They kill it, by the way. So time is running out, but don't worry. Our ensemble has a plan to get Troy and Gabriella to the callbacks. The decathlon team wins and Kelsey uses her laptop to somehow shut everything down in the gym. So they have to pause the game. The Brainiacs also make some dangerous chemical, forcing everyone to evacuate the room. And I'm just thinking, like, didn't, didn't they already win? Couldn't they just, I don't know, leave? Miss Darbus calls for Troy and Gabriella's name, knowing full damn good and well that she's the one who sabotaged them to begin with. And then when they finally shows up, she's like, sorry, I called your name twice and you weren't here. Even though they were right there, like it was two seconds after she called her name. But she changes her mind when the auditorium is filled with a bunch of teenagers. They start the long-awaited performance and Gabriella freezes because she's nervous, so they have to start over. But when they start over, the whole vibe changes. I mean, a backdrop shows up, the lighting changes, and they are just killing it. I mean, Troy's even doing the moonwalk and the whole audience is in it too. Gabriella even changes her wardrobe mid-performance. And after callbacks, the playoff game is resumed and the Wildcats win the game. Some mini epilogue moments include Chad and Taylor getting kind of romantically involved. Sharpay says something nice to Gabriella. And Zeke shoots his shot again to Sharpay, but Sharpay turns him down. At the end, the whole cast does this Bollywood style ending, which I still love today. Oh, and at the end, there's this cute little scene where Sharpay goes crazy over Zeke's cookies. And that's the end of it. High School Musical. I really thought I would cringe at this movie because when I rewatched Camp Rock, it just seemed really uncohesive and poorly written. But this movie was different. I actually really loved watching this again. Yeah, there's some weird details, but the plot and conflict is very clearly understandable for children, which is what the movie was marketed for. And it doesn't really matter how unrealistic the details are, like how callbacks don't really work that way, or how clicks don't really work that way, you know, things like that, you know? I think the musical numbers are really fun. I liked the choreography, and the music itself is really good too. Overall, it's a fun movie. I have no complaints. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.